Welcome everyone. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. Every week we try our best to get wonderful stories of innovation, entrepreneurship, and education, especially as they relate to service to others, uh, to the larger Rotary world, and anyone who chooses to join in with us. This week we have a, a special guest. Uh, our guest, Mona Osman, is in Saudi Arabia. She is an entrepreneur who has started an environmental company there and is going to be telling us about the work she is doing. Uh, things to know about uh, Ms. Osman, uh, she did her, her graduate work uh, in development practice, a master's degree, in the Paris School of International Affairs at uh, Sciences Po, uh, the same place our, uh, our board member Tsviatko Chidorov did. Uh, and she also has a, uh, a certificate from University of uh, California Berkeley, so we have that, that special connection to the Bay Area as well. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you here to talk about the work you are doing with your company, Naka, uh, which is the Arabic word for purity, I understand, and we are excited to learn more about what you are doing. So, welcome, Mona. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for, for having, having me today, today. and, and uh, hello, hello everyone. everyone. And I'm very excited to do my presentation for the e, uh, e Club Silicon Valley. And as you introduced me, uh, I'm, uh, I'm from Saudi Arabia. I was born in Riyadh. And I had all my study uh, until the undergrad in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and, uh, and I co-founded uh, uh, a social uh, business uh, that I have the presentation. So I'm going to try to... Uh, share the presentation with you now. All right. So, um, as I said, I'm a social entrepreneur and the co-founder uh, and managing partner of social business in the field of environment uh, in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's called Naqa. It's the Arabic word for purity. Uh, and I co-founded in 2010 with three of my best female friends, Nora Maghrabi, Sara Ghalib, and Munal Amir. So, and my journey uh, with social entrepreneurship began with a simple assignment for my English class uh, during my first year at Dar al-Hikma University, which is a private college uh, for a uh, university for girls only. So our lecture asked us to think of a small uh, scale project that would serve the community. Then we were required to execute this project for one day. Striving to be original, the professor challenged me to choose a topic that's normally not addressed in our community, uh, which is environmental awareness. And this is uh, it's, uh, for, uh, for several reasons, uh, such as uh, the school curricula lacks strong environmental education program, and the kingdom lacks the facility that makes uh, it accessible for public to practice recycling. And uh, uh, the local media really highlights the importance of uh, environmental awareness, and there's no strong environmental law enforcement. Uh, this is uh, so during working on the assignment. Uh, the assignment had given us uh, a chance to think of a solution for most neglected need in Saudi Arabia. So my team and I, who are my co-founder now, we thought of launching paper waste recycling project in our university campus. And through the assignment, we found out that through the assignment research, we found out that there are actually a couple of recycling factories in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. However, these recycling factories prefer to pick up recyclable uh, collection from uh, factories uh, because the, the daily pickup will be like uh, uh, a fold of ton per day uh, of what they would uh, collect from commercial or domestic. So, and also, uh, because there is no government regulations or enforcement system applies to them. So the assignment turned out uh, a huge success, and everyone in the campus got so excited for the idea, and they participate. So everyone brought their old books and magazines from home. And I believe we end up uh, to send uh, almost three ton of paper waste to the recycling factory. So at least the recycling factory were happy from us. And then from that moment, my passion grew toward environment, and my team and I uh, became the environmental advocate on the campus. So we launched Recycling Club, and that was in 2007, I believe. And we used to manage uh, a going, going, going green campaign. 
And actually, the recycling program are still self-sustained and operating till today at Dar al Hikmah. And uh, even though my study was not related to environment, as I was doing uh, nursing. And because of our uh, work uh, and efforts in recycling club, we were selected to participate in one year uh, uh, program. It was a seminar program on social entrepreneurship. Uh, at, uh, it, was, it was a partnership program between Dar al Hikmah University and Babson College. And we had the chance to, uh, to, uh, to go to uh, Babson and spend the summer there. Uh, so the program helped us to explore new possibilities to apply our uh, passion into business and uh, that solve pressing social and environmental issues, which motivated us to apply our ideas in real life. Uh, especially after we finished the social entrepreneurship program, we realized that the environmental issue Saudi Arabia is facing. Uh, uh, and as we generate more than 15 million ton of waste per year. Uh, so we uh, and we identified the great need for uh, for green and eco-friendly practices in uh, in our community. Uh, so even though we were in our senior year, we launched uh, Naqa inside the campus, and we received uh, great attention uh, and recognition of officials such as the general secretary. Of Islamic Conference, um, uh, Mr. Ahmed bin Ahsan Oglo, and from President Obama at the Entrepreneurship Summit in 2010, and um, Mohammed Yunus at the World Economy Forum. And because we were we were not only passionate about the new uh, social business idea, we were empowered enough to take leadership role in our community through social enterprise. So we decided to take our small organization, Naqab, beyond Dar al Hikmah campus, and we were willing to take the risk and the challenges. And because we have seen that there is a global attention towards sustainability and going green, and we saw the opportunity to bring this attention locally. So during uh, during that time, we met a, s a successful Syrian entrepreneur, Ken Morse, uh, in one of entrepreneurship events. Uh, who advised us to get mentors and to form a board of advisory and to be serious about it. And we did. So we had two awesome mentors who really helped us uh, to be in track and to see the opportunity we, that we could have, uh, which is uh, who are Dr. Charles Savage in, we, uh, in these pictures with us and, and two of my colleagues and Mr. Hisham al uh, So. They forced us to write the business plan, and, and actually was a challenge, especially that uh, I don't have a business background. But however, we learned how to write one with their help. Uh, so because we acknowledge the fast influence that business hold in society today, and as sustainability and green business uh, hold a lot of value in corporate social responsibility, we decided to focus on helping and assisting business make a positive impact in the community. So we registered Naqa uh, as a formal business in 2011. And that was uh, the time I decided to drop nursing and start uh, my new adventures in social entrepreneurship. Uh, actually, it was a shock for my parents. However, eventually, they understood they were patient with me, and still they gave me uh, the support. So then we knew about uh, a semi-government program. It's called Badr. Uh, it's a business incubation program in Riyadh. Uh, and we knew that they want to open branch in Jeddah. So we applied, and then we called for interview. We traveled to Riyadh. We presented the idea. Surprisingly, we heard back from them in a week. And we were accepted. And the following week, uh, they gave us uh, a space, the office, to work. And that was uh, early 2012. And uh, so Badr, they give all uh, financial, non-financial support and consultation. So, uh, and we were their first NQPT in, in Jeddah, uh, in West Region of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and at the same time, we applied for uh, a fund from the US Middle East Partnership Initiative. So these factors, uh, having the family and friends support, uh, having accessible to uh, to get fund 
and uh, joining Accelerator or Incubation Center was, uh, was a great start to test our model for the first two years. And um, for now, we have been operating for four years, uh, and we work with uh, almost over 30, we green over 30 business uh, and organization uh, across the kingdom, in Riyadh, Jeddah, and uh, uh, Damam. Um, so these are a list of our uh, clients. Usually we, work, we started working with international companies because it was easy to convince them about the concept. And then uh, like uh, the big Saudi companies that they have uh, a huge budget for CSR. So as I mentioned earlier, the kingdom lacks strong public environmental awareness. So we need to work on that. Uh, so, so one of our first activities was uh, we launched in January 2012 was online campaign uh, on Facebook and Twitter. We called uh, the hashtag Saudi Green Revolution Week. So it was another type of revolutionary movement of us, especially it was during the Arab Spring. So the Saudi Green Revolution Week was uh, a campaign of awakening a new beginning and hoping for a healthier and cleaner Saudi Arabia. Thousands of followers interact with us and we receive a great media attention. Uh, local magazines, newspaper, bloggers wrote and covered the campaign. Uh, and then we also produce uh, an informative and awareness video about the environmental sustainability in Saudi Arabia. This video in YouTube. Uh, and so we highlight the benefit of going green uh, with the companies that and organizations that worked with us. Also, uh, Another uh, activities uh, we did was that with international artists and the participation of the neighborhood, we covered a 53 meters uh, uh, wide wall with artwork. We used the Arabic calligraphy of the word sustainability, which is in Arabic istidama, uh, to evoke the importance of preserving and protecting the environment through sustainable development program. And usually we support local NGOs in organizing public environmental events. Uh, and we always use our social media to, uh, to spread awareness and for the local. So because uh, we work with business, so we develop a sustainable approach for our work with business, uh, where we highlight the financial benefits of a starting recycling program and green CSR uh, activities or initiatives, uh, where they will see the, the financial benefit as well as the social and environmental impact. So it's going to be more appealing for the general managers of the business to, to sign with us and to adopt our recycling program as part of their CSR initiatives. And of course, other than trying to convince business to start sustainable and impactful green initiative uh, and recycling program with us, we faced some other challenges in the beginning. Uh, one of it was like being women uh, co-founders and young, uh, and also uh, starting uh, a new a new business uh, that our social business. Uh, uh, also, uh, so how we uh, how we overcome this? Uh, actually, we had to hire. Eventually, we had to hire. Uh, one uh, guy, uh, and now we have two or three to work with us because uh, there's still in Saudi Arabia some companies that they uh, they don't have a female staff. So it was easy, like, uh, to interact with them and to communicate with them and to get a faster and quick decision uh, if they will deal with men. And uh, and for the first two years, we uh, we we try to not to focus also on the fact that we are social business, uh, more on the, the, the value on our services, uh, because many businesses, we will not really get what social business is, and maybe they will think it's sort of NGOs, and they will accept, uh, they will ex expect uh, free services. Uh, but however, uh, like nowadays, like the, the, the concepts are well known, uh, and, um, and even, we in the beginning we had to say like okay we we work for this company not really mentioning that we are the co-founder so, and we rebrand Nakaso it looks more uh, it looks more like a, a, a normal business 
Uh, but eventually, when they know, uh, like that we are the co-founders and like the, the company with young uh, employees, they will really appreciate, especially when they see the quality of the surfaces and the uh, products. Uh, and uh, and it's our one of our best tool for marketing that we really focus on. Um, let's say on the how we provide the surfaces because each companies uh, we try to tailor it. Uh, in a, according to their needs and requirements, so we don't really promote for one type approach. Uh, and c customer, um, well, how to say, like, yeah, uh, client refer. So this is also one of uh, good marketing tools that's really working with us. And client refer. So when they see like they, they started something new uh, for like let's say uh, uh, other companies, they will want uh, to know who did this for them. And uh, other thing we do because we truly believe on our uh, the power of social entrepreneurship to generate social and economic value, uh, we launch uh, uh, we develop a curriculum where we uh, deliver a social entrepreneurship idea lab, uh, and we do it uh, uh, like for the past three years we do it uh, once per year. Uh, and it's something we really enjoy to train uh, women and men to how they can start their own social ventures. And just to wrap up my presentation, uh, I will say that now where we are, we are continuing supporting local NGOs and also we are working to build sustainable environmental educational program. And uh, uh, also we are working with the uh, municipality and royal commissions and the chambers of commerce to influence uh, policy and to create uh, green standards to build strong, healthier and responsible community. And also we are working on to expand uh, our services to, the other, to other cities of uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, and this is, um, and thank you for listening to me and uh, if you need, uh, if there's any questions, um, I'm ready. Mona, what a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, I have actually multiple questions about uh, you and your work and your business. Uh, I want to also take a quick moment to introduce the uh, other people who are in the recording. We have two uh, members of our, our club, uh, both board members, uh, as it turns out, of the e-club of Silicon Valley. Uh, and that's Sviatko Chitarov, uh, who will continue to, to well, uh, there you go. You can see briefly because he's on the road. Yeah. Um, and then also Andrew Tao, uh, who is our uh, service chair. So in, in getting ourselves going with questions, I, I want to make sure that our, uh, you know, our, our participants from the club have the chance to ask anything they, they want. Um, I'm going to start by, by asking a little bit about you. Now, when, when, when looking at Saudi Arabia, especially from, uh, the, from a United States perspective, you know, we, we get precious little information in terms of nuance and detail, right? Uh, and so okay. can you tell me more about uh, your experience at, in terms of your education. Uh, the girls' school that you showed the, the picture of looks like an amazing facility. Uh, and and how, how widespread is the opportunity that you had uh, to, to not just to have an education in Saudi Arabia, but also to go and to study internationally? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, uh, like education is that the Saudi, in Saudi Arabia, uh, the women are really uh, empowered to continue their education. And, uh, and um, the education from the undergrad, like uh, the education from first grade to the high school, uh, the public school are for free. So I'm, I'm, I'm graduate from a, a public uh, school. Uh, and uh, and also there is a public uh, universities, but it's very uh, like kind of uh, competitive to get in. And there's so many different uh, you know, private uh, universities and colleges. Uh, and um, so I I I've been to uh, I attend the um, my undergrad from Dar al Hikma University. It's uh, one of the uh, private uh, university in Jeddah, but there is others. Uh, and uh, almost uh, all the other majors are now uh, open for women, 
um, from engineering to IT to business, medicine. So, uh, and, uh, and especially that uh, King Abdullah, uh, he had uh, his, uh, the, the scholarship program where many women, and it was open for both female and male to apply for this scholarship program to study abroad. Uh, and and still the 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 scholarship I think uh, still are uh, open for all the Saudis uh, students to apply for. Very cool, Andrew. Would you like to toss in a question before I, I leap on my next one? Sure. Um, so actually, I have a comment and a, and a question. Um, so first off, uh, I actually I really liked the 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 part of your narrative that was about um, how uh, your life was kind of going one way and then all of a sudden like you just sort of learned to do something else. Like I really like that this all sort of started in an English class and you were studying nursing, didn't really know much about business, but you went into business anyway. And that's, that's I think, really um, insightful. Because uh, I, I work with like, a lot of high school students and um, and they're very one-track minded. They feel like, okay, if, like if I go in this direction in my life, that's the direction I have to go in for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's why actually I shared uh, for that purpose the slide about the character of social uh, entrepreneur, and it was something that I didn't know about it. So, uh, so maybe not everyone are willing to take the risk. So that's why I said that. Me and my co-founder, we were like, we were not afraid to take the risk, even we didn't know if it's this business gonna work out. And like until I think two years ago, I was like, I think until like before this summer, like before I just came back from my master, like every day I would think that okay, maybe we need to think of exit strategy. Maybe this business is not not gonna work. Um, but then the days like go go on, and now we finish our fourth years, uh, and uh, of course one hundred percent now. Uh, I don't think that we need any <laughs> strategies, and and now we are thinking about our about our strategies to grow and to expand. So yeah, uh, so not everyone have that courage, and uh, I, I totally understand. Uh, but we just have a strong belief, and the thing is that we feel that it, it's it's not like like starting any other business, like not normal entrepreneurship. Like our business was social because we feel that there is a need. Like we we wanted to make a change to force everyone to recycle. So we started with business because it was easy and control like environment, and also way to get a profit. So we can not working on something we love, but also we are earning some profit. But now that's why now we are focusing to do something with with the public. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. I had a, a question actually about the um, social entrepreneurship component. Um, I think in the pictures there were, uh, I mostly saw a bunch of people um, in front of computers. Is, your, is that component online or is it, um, or local like that? Physical classroom. And and the picture. No, that was actually it's all physical uh, workshop. If I understood your questions, yeah. So it's a workshop. We do it. Uh, uh, like it's a physical workshop. We 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 have done it. I think three four times now. Uh, uh, where we op it's open uh, for a public, uh, male and female. Those who are even have an idea, or those who just started uh, their own enterprise. So we want to aware them that maybe it's possible that you can have a social impact on your startup. So it's just like to aware people about the concept and how they can turn their own business to a social, uh, to, to have a social impact. Very cool. Now, when, when you think about uh, like an ideal client for you, so you know you think about your business. Uh, you know, it, it's a lot of consulting. It's a lot of teaching. You know, helping people understand yeah. processes. You know, for for recycling effectively, not just for the good of the community, but for the good of the business. Um, yeah, sure. You know, in your setting, what what is the ideal client? I mean, it's a company which. How would you describe that? Yeah. So the uh, our ideal client is like uh, it's international. Uh, companies because there are so many international companies like branches of international companies in Saudi Arabia 
uh, uh, I've shared some like Nestle, Unilever, uh, Booba. So these company who are uh, already maybe uh, in their in their principle or in their value, they uh, aware about sustainability, and and also because. Their offices in, in let's say in US or in Dubai even maybe they already have a recycling program. Uh, so I would say international companies and a big uh, a big company like a, a company with a bigger size uh, that they have like a budget uh, to to start uh, initiatives. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it it seems to me that you you you've come at this in in, in a very uh, kind of kind of determined way. It's like okay, you know, we, we can start with these larger companies that have this yeah. importance. Yeah, they were like our first client segment, but also now we have working with the big holding Saudi companies and a non-profit organization. There's several foundations that are like owned by a prince or or, or king. So we have like Prince Majid Society, King Khalid Foundations. So also these MPOs because they do a lot of social development program and they are aware about sustainable development so they they it might interest them if we like propose the idea of to start a recycling program uh, and to award their employees because like the way we present it is like you're not gonna throw your papers away in a general trash you are saving the environment awareing your employees so if you have like 100 employees you are awareing 100 house about uh, preserving environment and at the same time there is some uh, it, like financial benefit because you will reduce your consumption of, of paper uh, with uh, when we provide them with tips how to print and uh, so there's where indirectly you are saving uh, you will reduce your operational cost so uh, when we present in that way that approach uh, actually many companies they like the idea Every every business wants to reduce costs for sure. Yes. <laughs> now now when we think about uh, the expansion, because you talked about moving into Jeddah and uh, and and to other cities in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Uh, I know that your family is originally from Djibouti, and and there may be mm -hmm. other uh, the other people uh, that you're working with who have contacts in other countries in the region. Uh, is there kind of a sense of going internationally with with your effort? Well, right now, like uh, let's say, even like the the uh, upcoming two years or three years, we are we wanna really expand regionally, like in Saudi Arabia. So, uh, though I was born in Riyadh, but uh, then we moved to Jeddah. So I've been here for 15 years. Uh, so we started in Jeddah, but however, uh, since two years ago, uh, we start uh, getting clients uh, working with the companies. Uh, in Riyadh and in uh, uh, and also the the west region east east region of Saudi Arabia like the Mam and the Haran, so um, so actually we we work uh, with uh, with other companies in other parts of Saudi Arabia, but we wanna maybe uh, we want to expand more and, and even to open like office uh, in Jeddah and in and, and Riyadh and in the Mam so. So that's like uh, our plan. Uh, maybe in the future, maybe do some partnership because um, I think there is some similar companies uh, or, organ or organization in the Gulf region like in Qatar or in UAE do the same thing we do. So maybe we do some collaboration or partnership uh, with them. Wonderful. Um, Andrew, do you, do you have another question uh, before, before we finish up? Yes. Um, so this is kind of a, I guess maybe a more fine detail question, but um, you were talking about uh, how you would help companies um, save on, on operational costs, and I was wondering um, what it took for you and your partners to learn those different ways to help them save on those on those costs. Because I think uh, at the time you guys were in school. Um, uh, so, w did you guys have like advisors who were in business who could see uh, these kind of areas that 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 could be solutions? Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, ever since we, we since we started the club, and then we went to Papson College. That was like in two thousand nine. Then two thousand ten, we just uh, uh, came up with the Naka as an initiative, and we and we launched it inside the campus. 
and then we only registered Naka end of 2011. So we almost had like let's say uh, two years and a year and a so where we learn more like we been to workshop and uh, and also uh, just to read uh, uh, articles and, and books about um, a green business and uh, we took the course in uh, we we took some online courses about how to be uh, in, to get um, like to be a green specialist uh, a lead certificate also we studied that so the GRE the global reporting initiative also uh, we attend the workshop so we work on our stuff and then uh, actually uh, my my co-founder uh, she, she was the first one who took her master uh, in sustainable management from Columbia University in 2012, right, right after we registered, she went to our master. So she used to share with us like what, what she learned in her, what she was learning in her during her master. Uh, and then I went to to take my certificate program at UC Berkeley, where I learned more about environment and sustainable management. So like along the way, like you know. And my third co-founder, she did her M uh, she did her MBA after we launched Naqa. She left in 2013. So we always like have to learn more uh, how we can convince business. Yeah, cool. continue learning. You know, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. All right, so um, we we need to wind down. Um, however, if you have time to stick around after we finish the broadcast, I have about, I don't know, at least 10 more questions that I'd love to ask. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by the work you're doing. Uh, and I know that not only are you on this, this wonderfully successful track with the business, but I also believe that the work you're doing will inspire a lot of girls in a lot of different places here in the United States and other places. Uh, you know, when they see, you know, someone who's determined to make something really good happen, and to create a business around it and understand that's possible. And so hopefully that inspiration is a part of it as well. In, inshallah, right? Inshallah, thank you. Absolutely. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give the finish and then uh, I'll also give the last word to you, Mona. Uh, so for all of our members and guests, thank you very much for joining us uh, at the E-Club of Silicon Valley. Uh, we are here every week uh, sharing stories of innovation, entrepreneurship, and education related to service. We love telling the stories of Rotary International, the work that's being done around the world to improve communities and to give people hope who need it. Um, don't we all? Uh, and, and I hope that you will join us again in the coming weeks. Now, before you finish today, though, make sure you scroll down the page. You're going to see a place where you can register your attendance. And if you are a visiting Rotarian, doing this will allow you to uh, receive an email that you can pass to your club secretary as a makeup for a miss at your own club. Uh, and finally, we want everyone to leave a message in our Discuss section at the bottom, the D-I-S-Q-U-S, and you can, you can uh, log in via a, a Discuss account or via Facebook or Twitter, you know, th these kinds of things, and, and let us know what you think. We are always trying to improve what we are doing and find ways to better tell the stories of, of Rotary and our efforts, and so we welcome your comments. And so to finish up today, I'll leave the last word to Mona. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I was really happy to be with you today and to present for the E Club. And I hope that you will find my presentation uh, useful and interesting. And feel free to connect with us, Naka. And, uh, and thank you very much. Wonderful. We will see you next week.